Hey, Thomas, how you doing? I'm good. How you doing? Pretty good. Can you just talk a little bit about this process and um, talk, you know, Alabama's become sort of a long snapper uh, institution. <laughs> uh, can you talk a little bit about that? And have you talked with Cole and Carson? Yeah, I've actually, I've maintained a relationship with uh, Cole Mazza and Carson Tinker. I actually, you know, spent time in high school and spent time during college working out with Carson. And when Cole was here, I worked out with Cole. And, you know, they've been guys who, you know, especially when I was younger and I was coming through the program and I didn't really know the ins and outs of the organization. And back when we were running pro punt, which is completely different from the punt that we ran the past three years, it's actually the punt that they run in the National Football League. Uh, you know, they were there to offer me advice and to give me tips and guidance. And, you know, especially when I was younger, I wasn't very big at all. I was like 185 pounds running in a professional punt system. And they were basically like, hey, if you're going to be small, you need to know how to win. You need to know how to, you know, beat the guy that you're playing against. And so to have tips and pointers from guys who had, had been there before and had done it at my position was absolutely fantastic. And from a preparation perspective right now, you know, the college punt is significantly different from what they do in the NFL because the rules say that in college, as soon as the ball is snapped, everybody on the line of scrimmage can release and go downfield and cover. Doesn't matter where you are on the line. I mean, if you want to snap and all 10 guys cover down, the punter punts the ball, you can absolutely do that. Uh, in the National Football League, the only people that can cover down are the two end men on the line of scrimmage, which 99% of the time, it's the two gunners on the outside. And so the box has to protect, you know, and the snapper is part of that protection. You know, you have to snap, and you have to set back. You have to block people. You're playing football more so than you are at the college level. And so for me, a lot of this preparation has been, you know, again, getting bigger, faster, and stronger and getting back to the snap and the steps and watching film, watching, you know, what has changed in pro punt since I was a freshman in college. And, you know, just getting back to what I'm going to have to do here going forward. Mateus, go ahead. Thomas, Mateus from Taima, Brazil. Congratulations for going for the NFL draft. Uh, talking with like kickers, punters, and long snappers, we know that the draft process is different for you guys. Like you, you know, have so many guys that are picked, but how do you try to show for the NFL that if it's not on the draft, like go for you in, in the free agency and just having a shot? How do you work on it and try to keep your head, your mind on the place for like maybe not drafted, but knowing that you're going to have a chance? Well, I mean, you're absolutely right in what you said about how the process is different because, I mean, you have 32 starting quarterbacks in the NFL, but every team really has three quarterbacks. In the NFL, you have 32 snappers and 32 that play. That's, that, that's it. There's only 32 jobs in the world that you get to you know, play this position. And so it's, it's certainly different. The process is different. Not everybody needs a guy. Uh, but you want to show that, you know, you're going to be able to step in and fill that role as, as soon as you're out of college. You know, that's the biggest thing that you need to show a team is the fact that, you know, as I mentioned before, how different the punt is in college versus what it is in the NFL. You want to show that team that you are capable of snapping and blocking and recognizing the protection and basically just, you know, refusing to lose in protection because you're blocking against guys who, you know, make their living for eight or nine years off of beating you at what you're doing. And so the, you need to show to whoever is going to take a chance on you that you are capable of putting yourself and the team in the best position to be successful and the best uh, best position to win. So, Phil Carella, go ahead. Hey, Thomas, it's uh, Phil Carella from Overtime Fantasy. How are you doing today? I'm fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing good, man. Uh, so real quick, what are some of the little things that you've been trying to improve on? And what's what's the feeling like to know that the next step is the NFL? Like, can you describe that? Yeah, I mean, the, the thing about the next step being the NFL is, I mean, I've always kind of anticipated it. Not that it was going to be an opportunity, but that, I mean, this is what I've been what I've been working towards, you know, I mean, this is the accumulation of coming to the University of Alabama, knowing that this place was going to put me in the best position to do that. And my expectation for myself was always to be in this position. You know, I'd always been working in the off seasons on, you know, what I was going to have to do in the National Football League. And also, I mean, what I was going to have to do in order to, you know, put our team in the best chance to be successful, because, you know, a, a lot of attention to a position like this comes from being a part of a winning program. And so I wanted to 
help this program be in the best possible position to win. Um, and so the little things that I've been working on over this process are matching laces. I mean, not a lot of people know that when you're a snapper at that level and the level that you know I just came from, it's vitally important that when you're snapping the ball on field goals, you want the holder to catch it where the laces are facing forward because you don't want them to put it down and have to spin it and move the laces around. And so just the thousands and thousands of repetitions figuring out, you know, am I going to hold the laces? Am I not going to hold the laces? Making sure that I'm capable of snapping the ball without the laces and putting the ball in the position where he's going to put it down and the laces are going to be forward. And from a punt perspective, it's again, like I said, it's, it's getting back to the steps and snapping the ball and getting depth back off the ball and making sure that I'm watching film and, you know, getting familiar again with the vernacular of, of pro punt, of what a protection is called, what it looks like, which direction I'm going to go. If, you know, one guy comes back, do I have to go with him? If there's six people to one side, am I going to stay on that side? It's just, it, it's getting back to, you know, again, what I did when I was, when I was a freshman in college, but wanting to, you know, make it look like I've been doing it the entire time that I've been in college, which I have. Chris Walsh, go ahead. What was the biggest surprise to you when you got to Alabama and, Forgive me for asking this. Did they, anybody call you Malfoy? Anybody? <laughs> Actually, I did get called Malfoy. I got <laughs> uh, that was a long time ago that I called got called Malfoy when I first got here. Um, that's pretty funny. Uh, biggest surprise when I got to Alabama. Um, you know, I was I, I was arrogant coming out of high school. No question about it. You know, I, I thought I was you know, the greatest to ever do what I did. And I hadn't, you know, done anything yet looking back on it. And so, you know, walking in and, and realizing that I had a punter in J.K. Scott, who was a whole lot more important than me. Um, and somebody that, you know, when, when I was in high school, my, my job revolved around me. And I had to realize with maturity that this job as a snapper revolves around your holder, your kicker, and your punter. You know, your entire job is based around trying to put them in the best possible position for them to be successful. I mean, you are working for those guys, basically. Um, I'd say it's probably the biggest. Uh, being, being super light when I got to college was, was definitely a surprise because, you know, I, I had never really thought about having to, to gain weight. And, you know, when you're getting recruited, they don't really talk about that. They try and tell you, you know, everything that's good about you and you show up and, you know, they're being – being real honest and you know I'm, I'm incredibly incredibly blessed to have been a part of this organization and an organization that grew me to be the best version of myself and you know I mean I've put on I think my freshman year of college the the lightest I got down to was like 179 pounds and you know I'm, I'm pushing 240 now so this this program has been absolutely phenomenal for me and I'll, I'm forever blessed to be able to tie my name to this organization and to Nick Saban for sure Jacob Infante go ahead Hey, Thomas, how you doing? I'm great. How you doing? Doing good. Uh, you had the opportunity to take part in the Senior Bowl. Uh, can you just speak a little bit about that experience and what that meant to you in terms of, you know, getting yourself out there uh, for NFL teams? Because especially like you mentioned, uh, teams, you know, tend to only carry one long snapper. So what was that experience like for you? The experience of the Senior Bowl, I mean, the, the fact that they pulled that off in the first place was absolutely unbelievable. I mean, Hats off to, to Jim Nagy and his staff that were able to, you know, in the midst of everything that we've had going on, I mean, they brought 130 or so people from all across the country and created a bubble in which, you know, nobody got sick and we were able to, you know, have that opportunity that at one point looked like it might not happen. And I think a lot of people didn't think it was going to happen. So, I mean, hats off to, to Jim Nagy again. I mean, that was the fact that they pulled that off was absolutely remarkable. And then the experience of, you know, getting back to pro punt, as I said before, which is which is the biggest transition that a, a snapper has to make and going to the next level. You know, I mean, we got to practice for a week with guys who are going to be playing in the National Football League and with coaching staffs who do it every day. And so we got, you know, a real quick crash course on, you know, going back to what we're going to have to be doing going forward. And so, I mean, the Senior Bowl, was an absolutely phenomenal experience and it was very, very beneficial to me. And I mean, if anybody gets the opportunity to play in that game or if you get the opportunity to go down and witness that game and witness the experience for yourself, absolutely do not pass it up. It's a, it's a very remarkable event and the people that put it on were nothing but fantastic. Alex Fleming, go ahead. How you doing today, sir? Alex Fleming, Florida Sun. 
I'm doing fantastic, man. How are you doing? Not too bad. It's a beautiful day. No doubt about um, it. Do you, do you feel that COVID has affected the limelight of your position and how it should be respected? Because some people feel that, you know, special teams is not as important as offensive defense. But what you do is very key into field position uh, and what happens on the field. So do you feel COVID has affected how some people view it? The lot in a, in a positive or a negative way, because the limelight of this position has never really been at the forefront of, of what we do. That was a question. Uh, how about, how about negative or positive? Give me both. Um, if anything, it's been pretty much the same. I mean, the, the process, I mean, not, not being able to go to Indianapolis, I guess, for, for the Combine is, is one thing. Um, but, you know, be, being invited to the Combine in the first place, I mean, I, I, mean, I think it's pretty much the same. I, like, it's, I guess from the outside, it looks like it's, you know, probably affected a, a lot of what we do. But I can tell you, I mean, we, we come to work the same way that we always have. And if anything, it might be beneficial because it's, it's tough for – a lot of teams to come down and, and work out a long snapper, but it's really easy to hop on a Zoom call, you know? So, I mean, as far as a limelight perspective, I think it's about the same, but the access to the coaching, to the coaching staffs and the people that you need to talk to, it, it might even have improved. I don't know. I, um, yeah, the limelight of this position has never really been at the forefront of, of anything. I'd say it's probably pretty much the same. John Shear, go ahead. Oh, sir, how are you doing today? I'm absolutely fantastic. How are you doing today? I'm doing well. It's a pleasure to talk to you. So what would it mean to you landing with a team like the New England Patriots that highly value special teams? I know every team values special teams, but the, the Patriots, obviously, um, they put it far above everybody else from what I see. What would it mean landing with a team like that? Landing with, with any, I mean, it, it's it's the National Football League. I mean, it might look like that on the outside, but I can promise you there's, there's not a team of the 32 that does not put a price on special teams. I mean, that's one-third of, of what happens. I mean, the percentage chance of winning a game when a punt gets blocked, like if you are the team that gets a punt block, goes down exponentially. If a field goal gets blocked equally as much, I mean, it's – it might look like that from the outside, but I'm telling you, this is it's not a league with some teams that care about special teams. It is a league that cares about special teams. I mean, if there's anything I've learned in, in this process or at being at the University of Alabama, it's the fact that, I mean, special teams wins games, and it doesn't matter what team you play for. Special teams is a facet that needs to be, you know, it has to get the same amount of time and attention as everything else does. And, you know, the players that play on special teams in the NFL, I don't care what team you play for, there are guys that, you know, I mean, don't even have to play a specialist position that play in the NFL for 10, 11 years on, you know, the six phase on, well, really the four phases on kickoff, kickoff return, punt, punt return for a really, really long time. You know, I mean, it's, this, this is, it's, it's not a league based off of which teams like special teams. It is a league that values special teams. And I firmly believe that everybody does that. So it, it doesn't really, it, it's not particular to one team or another. David Miller, go ahead. Uh, hi, Thomas. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you doing? Oh, good, cheers. Um, just quickly, obviously, from the perspective of the guy that is in the middle of all the action, all the carnage on special teams, uh, what is it all like, obviously, snapping a punt and having to quickly sort of change your face? Could you repeat that last part or you cut out for a second? Oh, sorry. Uh, so from your perspective on special teams, what is it like going from snapping the punt to quickly having to focus your attention to blocking? Uh, that, it's, it's just kind of part of what you do in a lot of ways. I mean, the snap kind of takes you into the block. Like when you're snapping, the momentum of what you do, you're going to slide back about six inches just with your feet in the ground immediately. And, I mean, you're taking your first step when the ball is like seven yards behind you. I mean, you're not snapping it and watching it hit the punter's hands. You're throwing the ball, and once the ball is six, seven yards behind you, I mean, you need to be up and making contact with that guy. And you're going to make contact with the dude in the first, you know, yard and a half that he's getting off the ball and that you're getting off behind the ball. And so it's, I mean, it happens fast. It happens 
incredibly fast. It happened fast in college, and it happens a whole lot faster in the National Football League. Um, but it's just, it's all, it's, it's not a snap and a block. I mean, it's kind of all tied in to itself. You got, you got to be moving off the ball as soon as you let it go because that guy that's rushing against you is not another long snapper. That's a guy that's making millions of dollars doing what he's doing and trying to ruin your day, you know? Any other questions for Fletcher? All right. Thanks, Thomas. Thank you, guys. Pat Sertan will be in.